In the last video, we learned about floating point binary numbers. But how does the computer perform operations on such numbers? That is, how does computation take place? Computation is largely handled by a component called arithmetic and logic unit, also called as the ALU. By definition, the ALU is a multi-operational combinational logic digital function. It is used to perform arithmetic and bitwise operations on binary numbers. The ALU is a fundamental building block of many computing circuits. The ALU has two parts, the arithmetic part, which does operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, incrementing, decrementing, and so on, and the logical part, which can perform operations like OR, XOR, and NOT. Simply put, ALU is the calculator portion of the computer. An ALU takes in inputs called operands. These are the values on which the calculation will be performed, and another input called the op code. This specifies which particular operation will be performed, that is to add or subtract or to perform AND or XOR. The ALU gives out an integer result output and also a status output, which are various signals like carry in, carry out, zero, negative, overflow, parity, etc. Let's take a look at this diagram of a 4-bit ALU. Here we have 4 data inputs from A that are combined with 4 data inputs from B to generate an operation at the F outputs. Say 1011 is input from A and 1111 is input from B. The mode select input S2 distinguishes between arithmetic and logic operations. That is roughly speaking, if the mode select bit is input 0, then the ALU will perform a logical bitwise calculation, and if the mode select is 1, then the ALU will perform an arithmetic calculation. Every ALU will have a table that specifies a combination of input bits that will perform a particular operation. For example, according to this, if I want to perform addition, then I will input 1 as the input bit for mode select, that is S2, and 0 as the input bit for S1 and 1 as the input bit for S0 to select the particular addition operation. The input carry is quite often used as a fourth selection variable to double the number of arithmetic operations that can be performed. In this way, it is possible to generate four more operations for a total of eight arithmetic operations and four logic operations. Now let's look at how ALUs perform operations. An ALU consists of adders. An adder is a digital circuit that performs addition of numbers. A half adder takes two binary digits as inputs, A and B, and adds them together to output S, the sum. Since both A and B are single bits, there can be only four possible outcomes. 0 plus 0 will sum to 0. 0 plus 1 will sum to 1. 1 plus 0 will sum to 1 again. 1 plus 1 will output 1 0, which is 2 bits. The least significant bit is output as the sum and the next bit is carried over. Now you can notice that in the fourth case, the output consists of 2 bits. To output these 2 bits, the half adder uses 2 output wires, sum and carry. Notice that the carry bit is only true when both the inputs are true and is false in all the other cases. The half adder essentially is a component that takes two input bits and outputs two bits. But say you need to perform a multi-column addition. So now you need to have the circuit that takes in three inputs. The half adder leaves us with a carry bit as the output. So now, when you move on to the next column, you need to add 3 bits together. For this, we need a full adder. A full adder takes 3 bits as inputs and outputs 2 bits. A full adder can deal with one column of addition. But in arithmetic operations, we need to perform operations on multiple columns. For performing such arithmetic operations, we use a parallel adder. A parallel adder to add n bits is made by combining n full adders. A parallel adder essentially is a cascade of full adders. Let's look at how a parallel adder adds two numbers. Take two 8-bit numbers, A and B. Take the first bit of A and call it A0 and B and let's call it B0. 
At this point, we have no carry bit because this is our first column of addition. Since we have only two bits, we can use our adder to add these bits. The output is S0. Now let's move on to the next column and add A1 and B1 together. There might be a carry from the previous column of addition. So now we use a full adder to add C1, A1 and B1. This will output the result S1. Then we take the carry from this column C2 and input it into the next column of bits A2 and B2 to get the sum S2. We repeat this process for all 8 bits to reach the final answer of this 8 bit addition. Notice that the carry signals connect one unit to the other unit just like how carries connect one column to another column when we perform addition by hand. A subtractor works similarly by modifying each full adder in the parallel adder cascade to include an inverter to one of the inputs. It includes an inverter that changes the sign of one of the numbers before it adds them together. So essentially, the ALU will perform the instruction subtract 3 from 6 as addition of 6 and the complement of 3, complement meaning the inverse. Besides addition and subtraction, the ALU performs other arithmetic operations like multiplication, division, increment and decrement. The ALU also performs logical operations. There are four fundamental logical operations, OR, XOR, AND, and NOT. The bitwise OR returns true if either of its inputs is true. As we already know, 0 stands for false and 1 stands for true. So 0 or 0 is 0, 0 or 1 is 1, 1 or 0 is 1, and 1 or 1. The exclusive OR returns true if and only only one of its inputs is true and the other is false. 0 XOR 0 is 0. 0 XOR 1 is 1, 1 XOR 0 is 1, and 1 XOR 1 is 0. The AND gate outputs true only when both of its inputs are true. So 0 and 0 gives 0, 0 and 1 gives 0, 1 and 0 gives 0, and only 1 and 1 gives 1. The NOT gate simply returns the inverse of the input bit. So 0 gives 1 and 1 gives 0. This concludes our brief introduction to the arithmetic and logic unit.